Uh, I'm Mary Fox, author of the book, uh, My Life as a Potter, and founder of the Mary Fox Legacy Project. And today, I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite equipment in the studio here, my pug mills. Uh, did you hear me right? Did I say pug mills? Uh, yes, it appears I have become a bit of a Peter Pugger pug mill piggy. I have too. Um, this one actually just arrived yesterday, so I haven't even uh, mixed clay through it. Uh, this is the nice stainless steel model. This is my old workhorse, and this baby's been working for me since 2004. And I gotta say, I love it. it it's still working just great. It's the aluminum model. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the differences between the two machines. Uh, but mainly, I just want to really um, tell you about how to use these machines in your studio practice. Uh, if you're a studio potter, nothing is gonna up your throwing game better than having really nicely mixed clay. Uh, you don't need to wear out your wrists. You're never gonna be throwing the clay and coming up about that stiff bit where it's not quite the same consistency as the rest of the body. So it'll make your centering easier. It'll make your throwing easier. It's gonna save on your wrists over the years. Um, they're expensive machines, but uh, don't be penny wise and pound foolish because uh, they are gonna save your body. Uh, and like I said, they're gonna up your throwing game. And believe it or not, actually when I got this pug mill, it took me quite a few years before the penny dropped and I realized I could do away with a whole bunch of the old recycling habits that I had as a, a young potter and do all the recycling in here. So this is great because all of us potters have, have unless we have these beautiful machines, buckets of recycle uh, taking up space in our workshops, buckets of slop, and whoever got up in the morning and went, oh, today's recycle day, oh yay, <laughs> right? So uh, when I'm throwing, I have uh, a bucket by my wheel and I just throw all my trimmings into the bucket and the heavy slop from my hands, etc. And then when I go to mix my clay, uh, I'm pretty much always putting some of the recycle in. You have to have a bit of the regular clay in, and then you add your recycle, which I'm going to do now. <laughs> oh, hi. She always wants to help. But as you can see, like these are like just trimmings off, the, off my pots, this and that. I'm using like an old cart horse here. And then you tamp her down. Now I just have it on mix. I press the start button. Just get that clay down there a bit, let her grind about. I, I tend to mix on the dry side because it's easier to add moisture in the process than to take it away. And add a bit of moisture. I'm gonna add it down at this end. Okay, so when it looks like this on the inside, there's not enough clay in there. Um, the, the mill will, and something, if you end up putting too much water in, the clay can end up being in a glob and not sort of break up and mix around. That's, uh, if you see that happening, just add more clay. And, uh, you always use plastic uh, tools when you're working on the inside of the mill here because you don't wanna, you don't wanna scratch the surface. And you wanna keep this pretty clean because it won't get a good vacuum seal if this is all dirty. Clay's been mixing for about between five and 10 minutes, not quite. Uh, I did add a little bit of water. It looked a little dry in there. I think it's probably just right. I've already vacuumed it. Uh, when I switch the machine so I'm gonna stop the machine now, stop a little bit of that noise. When I switch the machine over to pug, and when the, it initially starts to shoot the clay out the nozzle, sometimes a little bit of air will kick back in. Uh, so you'll see the dial will bounce a bit. So what I do is I switch it to pug, and I stand here, and as soon as I see that bop up, I hit stop, let the vacuum bring the dial right back and then press start again. And then from there, it'll go pug through the whole way. Um, and I mentioned that sometimes if you overfill this a bit, the extra clay will 
come through into here. Now you don't, you want to check this frequently. You don't want this to get loaded up with clay. That's not good, but it's not unusual to end up with, uh, you know, a small amount back here. And so we just pull that out. There we go. So that's a, basically that was like that much clay. You don't want you don't want it a lot more than that. That just shows you that the mill was nice and full. It was there was a little bit of extra and it gets sucked back there with with the vacuum when the vacuum gets started. And this is actually a safety mechanism because then the clay gets sucked into here and not into the the bowels of the machine, so to speak. So now we're going to start to pug. There it is. Okay, so it just bounced back to 20. And now I'm gonna start pugging again. Now, when I tear this puppy off, I usually, I like to, this is, this is just me in habit. I tend to stand here. I, I wait till the sausage is out to about here. Then I whip it off and over to my wedging table and, uh, take it off into the amount of pounds that I want. But you can also just stop it and come back. But look at how that twists off nicely. Now that is some nicely mixed clay. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about my new baby. Uh, I think I've mentioned to you how great these are as far as saving uh, wear and tear on your body. So uh, as I've shown you with the recycling the clay, you're saving a ton of time uh, laborious time recycling your clay. You're saving your wrist because you're not wedging tons and tons of clay. This is huge. I don't know of any potter that has not complained about their wrist at some point in time, right? Uh, you know, um, I'm uh, 61 years old, still potting. My wrists are okay. Unfortunately, I have trigger finger. Which finger do you ask? This one. Oh, always something. I actually haven't pugged any clay through this yet. This has been loaded up with porcelain. And why you ask, do I have two of these machines? And this comes down to trying to decide what kind of machine to buy. Uh, there's a couple of things that you need to think about. The stainless steel model has been designed for people that use porcelain primarily or a porcelainous stoneware. When they first started making the mills in the aluminum body, uh, it, it became apparent not too f far along that if you only used porcelain clay in there and say you left the porcelain sitting in there for a couple of months and you weren't mixing it and everything wasn't flowing through on a daily basis, uh, you could get pitting. And that's a chemical reaction that happens between the porcelain and the aluminum. If you run an iron rich clay through there, that never happens. Uh, as you can see, I've been using that machine for almost 20 years and I've had no problems, but I also don't work just with porcelain or porcelainous stoneware. So I'll be working with those clays for, you know, three or four months, and then I'll be switching over. I'll be running some iron rich clay through there that totally moves all the, the bitties out, the porcelain bitties that are stuck to the side. Um, and actually the only times I would clean this machine was when I was switching from the iron rich clay, which is a, for my decorative work, is a low fire raku clay body, to back to the porcelain and stoneware, which is cone 10. So then the machine would be cleaned completely uh, in prep for putting the porcelain in. Then I start working with the porcelain, um, work for that three, four months, then the other clay. So really only having to clean the machine, well, probably not much more than once a year. Um, which in itself is sweet. They only take a, an hour to clean, but it's just one of those jobs that, you know, we tend to put off. Being mindful, uh, I think I've mentioned to you about the Mary Fox Legacy Project, and you can learn more about that on my website. Part of putting together the project ha has me thinking very much uh, of the different equipment that I have in the studio and studio artists coming after me. So I thought, one night I thought, oh gosh, what if the studio artist doesn't realize that you can't leave porcelain sitting in the aluminum mill for months on end without, you know, cleaning it out or, or mixing it up and then pitting happens. So I thought, oh, I should buy the stainless steel model for, for the project. 
uh, down, somewhere down the line. And then I thought, hmm, well, actually, I'm the resident artist now. It'd be really nice to have two mills. <laughs> <laughs> so, because uh, I, I work with a lot more porcelain these days, uh, now that I have that beautiful Blau kiln and I'm exploring all the Conten work, I'm loving the porcelain. So I have this. And so I, I've got a box of porcelain in here and I'll show you how nicely it, it mixes through. Back to my original comment. If you work with porcelain or porcelainous stoneware, spend the extra money, buy the stainless steel model. If you work primarily with iron rich clays and not as much the porcelainous stonewares, then go for the aluminum mill. It'll be perfectly fine and suit your needs. As you can see, it's lasted me many, many years. The other thing you need to decide when you're trying to decide which mill to buy is what size. So I like this, the VPM 20 because uh, it takes just the perfect amount of clay for me. Uh, but now I try to limit to myself to no more than 40 pounds. Uh, and so, you know, a, a mill and a half is, is plenty for me in a day. So you're trying to decide between the two. What, what size of mill to get? Should you get the, the VPM 20 or should you get the smaller version? If you are a hobby potter, the smaller version will do you quite nicely. They're, they're a beautiful little machine. They don't take up as much room. They're a little less coin. Um, so, you know, I would, I would go with that. If, however, you are going to be a production potter or you're thinking this is what you're gonna do for a living, I think you will find this machine so much nicer because it just is the larger hopper size. It's so much easier to put more clay in here to recycle uh, with this larger hopper than it is on the slightly smaller machine. You can do all your recycling in the smaller machine, don't get me wrong, it'll do everything that this one will do. It'll just take you a little bit more time. That's really how I would decide the clay body that you're using and how much work you do. Well, oh my God, I don't even have to, this, this new machine is so beautiful. I turn it, I turn the vacuum on. I've loaded this up with porcelain. This is the very first pug th through for it. It's already like whoop. Uh, the vacuum is like up to 30. I don't even have it mixing. It's just like, there we go. It's mixing, it's up to 30. Just like that, <sighs> popping back a bit, leveled out at 30, ooh, a little bit past 30, ooh, popping up a bit. Takes it just a couple of minutes to get everything just so. So now it is just so. Turn off the machine, and then we turn it to pug, and this will be the first pug through of some nice, fresh uh, Coleman porcelain. Ooh. That was a little air getting in there. I forgot, I gotta press pug first. Press start. Okay. Whoa, there's the little suck back. Oh my God, I love how quiet this is. Oh, my new baby. All right, so now we're right back to where we wanna be. We press start again. And that, uh, that should be it for the air suck. It's gonna take a little bit, because there's no clay in the nozzle yet, because this is the first run through. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So there, now I'm gonna see if it's the same as my other mill and turn off the pump. Voila, it's holding its pressure nicely. Very good. Oh, let's see, the speed is, yep, speeds up. So this is the very first pug through. And uh, me being a creature of habit, you know I'm tearing off that first, <laughs> tearing off that first sausage and not using it. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So, um, oh, I, I have to show you this. Okay, so you see how beautiful and nice and soft and how my fingers are going in that? I have not put any water in here. Last night, getting ready for you guys today, I put the porcelain in here. And this porcelain has been sitting in my gallery for, oh, I don't know, a year? Okay, so back to that uh, conversation I had with you earlier about how uh, you buy clay and it's all stiff and you have to go and and wedge it and it's killer for your wrists. And porcelain is usually stiff at first and then it gives once you start going, but there. 
Look at how stiff that is. And now, look at that, my hand just going in that, just like that. And that has just been like five minutes mixed in here when it was like this before. So I think there is the argument for saving your wrists. I have to keep coming back to body mechanics. Like I say in my book, really, you gotta take care of your body. That's, that's number one. This is a very physical job. And anything that you can do to help lessen the load on your body, that's a good thing. So enjoy your puck mills. So now I've shown you how sweet these machines are and you're all jonesing to go out and buy one. Um, I am going to be starting to make a series of videos. It's called In the Creation Room with Mary Fox. And the original, the idea behind the series that I'm going to be producing is actually as a resource for the Legacy Project. So that in the future when I'm no longer here and there are resident artists coming to work here, they can reference the uh, tableware forms that I made and see how I threw them, et cetera, et cetera. So I decided, well, why don't, why don't I make a series of videos and instead of like just sitting on them till the project begins when I am no longer here, uh, why don't I put them out into the world today uh, and put them on my website for the potters of today to view. Uh, so those are gonna be coming along. I don't know you know, how many I'm going to be doing or, or how often, but I would presume there'll probably be a new one every couple of months because they will take a little while for me to get together. And uh, the other thing is, of course, I hope you buy my book. Uh, all proceeds from my book go to the Legacy Project. And uh, the book has been very much written as uh, myself talking to you and sharing my rabbit trail of discovery, sharing my life as a potter, how I became a potter, some of the obstacles I overcame, and of course sharing my glaze recipes and how I came to produce the glazes, and the clay, the forms, all the things I wish I knew as a baby potter, those sort of things. I hope you enjoy reading it, uh, especially the chapter, all the things I wish I had known, uh, which was actually my favorite chapter in the book to write because as a baby potter, um, they're just like, Old Mary looks back and goes, oh God, I wish I'd known that. Oh God, I wish I'd known that. Uh, so anyhow, I really enjoyed writing that chapter and I enjoyed making uh, this video for you all. So pot on. <laughs>